morning and happy Sabbath. I'm so glad that each of you have joined us for this morning's online church. And I would like to share with you um, some things that I have been pondering over much lately. Um, I've been reading in my Bible and I've been praying a lot. And a while back, I was saying, Lord, what is wrong? I want to come out of this. I want to feel like I'm living. And so as I was reading in Proverbs, Proverbs 17 to be exact, and verse 22, this verse just popped out at me. And so let's read it together. Um, Proverbs 17, 22. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. You know, sometimes in Proverbs, it has a very similar verse with different words. So I went looking for that verse, and let's, let's compare these. Um, I found it in Proverbs 15 and verse 13, and it says, A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. So, does that mean that the spirit is broken when, when the spirit is broken, your bones are drying up? And inside your bones, there's marrow. And the marrow is kind of like your life. It's when the marrow is not doing good, you get sick. And you don't want to get sick. I don't like being sick. I don't think anybody else likes being sick. But the Bible tells us what the um, antidote for being sick is. And that's to be cheerful, to have a cheerful heart. And so I was really pondering this and saying, Lord, what do I do? How can I get out of this? Because I have had some things that have broken my heart. I have had some things that have dried up my bones, so to speak, and maybe even more than just so to speak. And so I was saying, how can I, how can I have a cheerful countenance? Because a cheerful countenance comes from the abundance of the heart, but if the heart is broken, then it's hard to have a cheerful countenance. Well, then the Lord showed me something else, and that is found in Isaiah 61. I like this. And this is a prophecy about Jesus, what Jesus' mission here on this earth is. And I believe that if we allow him, he will do this for us also. Excuse me. Isaiah 61, verses 1 and 2. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. The bind up, what I see in my mind's eye, is that he's coming to put a bandage, to put, to heal our broken heart, and to allow it to heal so that it can be free again. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And you know, when we're in a broken heart, a broken spirit, we're captives. And the opening of the prison to to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. What an incredible promise. God wants to heal our broken hearts. He wants to comfort those who have mourned, those who have lost, those who have, who their heart is too heavy to sing. He wants to put a song in our heart. And you know, when John was baptizing in the wilderness at the Jordan River, when he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. It's our job to behold the Lamb of God, who wants to bind up our broken hearts, who wants to comfort those who mourn. And so in doing this, he can make our hearts sing with the joy and the gladness that God gives us. And that's what I want to encourage you to do, is give God your broken heart so that He can heal it and He can, he can um, 
comfort you. You know, also in Psalms 34, 18, let's turn to Psalms 34, 18. Because I want to show you this promise. Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. Let's allow God to heal our broken hearts so we can share Him with the world, so they can behold the Lamb of God with us.